Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving a golden trigonometric equation. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, also comment and subscribe, and let's get started. This puzzle was suggested by one of my viewers, Akaki Zidziguri. Thank you Akaki for the suggestion. So we have tangent squared x plus cosine 4x is equal to 0, and we're going to be solving for values of x. Now this equation actually looks a little unusual at first because we have the tangent, we have the cosine, so it's not the typical trigonometric equation. And the solution method that I'll be using here uses a lot of substitution, a lot of good algebra, so stay tuned, hang on tight. Okay, so the first thing that I'll, I'd like to do is write the tangent squared as sine squared over cosine squared. Okay, so let's start with that one. And what I'd like to do next is I'd like to write the cosine 4x using the double angle formula. And just as a quick reminder, what is the double angle formula? And we use this in our other videos as well. Cosine 2 alpha, as you'll remember, there are three formulas for cosine 2 alpha. But we're going to be using the one that has cosine in it, cosine only. And that one is 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. All right? So if you apply that, so in other words, if you say that alpha equals 2x, then you should be getting something like this. 2 times the cosine squared of 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we got our equation, but here's the problem. We still have the cosine squared x along with the cosine squared of 2x. I mean, squares can be taken care of, but we do have kind of two different kinds of things. So we still need to use the double angle formula one more time. And as you know, it's basically substitution. So if you go ahead and replace cosine of 2x with what it is, and you should be getting the following. So 2 times, instead of cosine squared 2x, I'm going to be writing first cosine 2x is going to be 2 times cosine squared x minus 1. And of course, I need to square that and then subtract 1, multiply by 2 and subtract 1, and the whole thing is equal to 0. All right? Cool. Now let's proceed and see how this goes. Again, like I said earlier, uh, this is going to involve a lot of substitutions. Okay. Now, I'd like to expand this, of course, and one of the things that I'd like to do is because I pretty much have everything in terms of cosine, but I do have a sine squared in the numerator. And I don't like that because there are different kinds, but they can easily be converted because, as you know, the Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Remember that? And if you remember, if we used it in the previous video, the two videos before this one, had another trigonometric equation with the 100th powers, right? Okay, if you remember, in that video, we use this identity. So it's a very, very important identity in trigonometry. Now, this allows you to replace sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. Nice. Now, everything was written in terms of cosine squared, so I can do some substitution. But let me go ahead and expand this first. So if you expand this like a minus b quantity squared, you're going to be getting something like 4 cosine to the fourth power. But multiply by 2, that's going to give you 8 times cosine to the fourth power of x. And then in the middle, you're going to be getting something like minus 4 cosine squared x. And that's going to be multiplied by 2 again. And that's going to be 8 minus 8 cosine squared x. And then finally, we have a 1. Multiply that by 2. You're going to get 2 times 1, which is 2, right? But that's going to be a positive one when you square it. Remember that. So it's going to be 2. And then minus 1 is equal to 0. Of course, we're going to go ahead and simplify this and write it in the simplest form. Okay, great. But that's pretty much where we're going to go from. So in this expression, obviously, you don't want anything in the denominator. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator. Or we can do the following. Assuming that cosine x will never be 0, okay, because if it is, then we have a problem. Uh, multiply both sides by cosine squared x, because if it's not 0, we can do that. Okay, cool. So we're going to go with this assumption. If at the end we find something that makes cosine x equal to 0, then we'll reject that. Okay, cool. Now, if you do multiply both sides, then you should be getting something like this. 1 minus cosine squared x plus, and this is going to be fun because we're going to get a sixth degree. But don't worry, we'll handle that. So it's going to become 8 cosine to the sixth power because I'm multiplying everything by cosine squared, remember? Minus 8 times cosine to the fourth power of x. And this is 1, but I'm multiplying by cosine squared, so it's going to be cosine squared x. And of course, the answer is 0 again. Great. Now, in this equation, in this equation, what am I supposed to do? Well, first of all, simplify it, right? 
And notice that negative cosine squared and positive cosine squared, they're just going to cancel out. Great. So we get a simpler equation. Well, it kind of looks a little simpler than that, but still, power-wise, it's actually not that simple, right? And you look at it like, wow, we don't even have a formula. We don't even have a formula for the quintic, right? How am I going to solve this six-degree equation? But guess what? It is kind of like a double or by, I don't know, whatever you want to call that. There's probably a name for it. But notice that the powers are all even, which means that I can actually do some substitution here, right? Okay, let's do that. What is that, substitu what is that substitution going to look like? Well, first of all, I'd like to do this basic substitution because it helps a lot. I don't want to keep writing cosine x, cosine x every time. Why don't we call that c? Great. So now I have 8c to the 6th power minus 8c to the 4th power plus 1. Okay, this equation is of 6 degree, but it can be solved if you substitute, say, uh, let's name c squared u. Okay, u substitution. Then in this case, we're going to have something like 8u cubed minus 8 u squared plus 1. Nothing happens to the constant, right? Okay, great. Well, this is a cubic equation and obviously much, much better. But still, solving this cubic is going to involve some work, right? I mean, if you're going to use the Cardano's formula, eh, I don't think so. But you know, there might be some rational solutions, and there are. And I know some of you are going to say like, hey, you know, this is a solution, so why don't we test that out? Nope, I'm not going to do it that way. Forgive me, but I'll use another substitution. How am I going to do that? Okay, I'm going to write this, and I just like it because it's fun. Look at this. 2u, 2u, okay, happy birthday song again. So 2u to quantity cubed, I can write that, right, for the 8u cubed. How about, how about this one? Well, I want to use 2u in my expression, okay? So I can just go ahead and do the following. Like, if I square 2u, what happens? I get 4u squared, but I do need negative 8, so just multiply by 2. Well, it's done. That's simple, right? Plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, why did I do that? Some people may find it unnecessary, but that's okay. Everybody has a different opinion. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to name 2u something else, right? Okay, how about 2u is equal to y? And don't ask why, okay? So if I do that, I get y cubed minus 2y squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Now you know why. Okay, you see how simple that is? And moreover, we do have a solution right away. Remember what I've been telling you in all these algebra problems. Check for sum of coefficients all the time. Almost always works, right? Most of the time we have y equals 1 as a solution. And it is. Why? Because y equals 1 satisfies the equation. Why? Because the sum of the coefficients is equal to 0. Make sense? Polynomials. Okay, great. So now it means that y equals 1 is a solution, which is nice. Then I can kind of backtrack and find my cosine x values. But that's not the only solution. How am I going to find the other solutions? You can do polynomial division, long division, short division, whatever. Or you can do the little bit of manipulation, which is something that I really like. So we're going to manipulate the y squared. So I'm going to write it as y cubed minus y squared. But then I need to subtract another y squared to make it negative 2y squared. You see, it balances out. Plus 1 is equal to 0. Awesome. Now I'm going to factor this by grouping, and it's going to be beautiful. So take out the y squared, you'll get y minus 1. Take out the negative 1, you'll get y squared minus 1, which can be factored into y plus 1 times y minus 1. Isn't that awesome? Okay, great. I can hear you say this is awesome. Great. So now y minus 1, y minus 1 is a common factor. So why don't we take that out? Let's do it. y minus 1 is a common factor. Then I should be getting something like y squared minus 1 times negative 1 times this quantity. Here is going to be everything will be negated. So it's going to be y squared minus y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now you might be wondering why we call this a golden trigonometric equation. The golden ratio comes up a lot, right, in problems, in polynomials. It has a very significant place. Anyway, so let's proceed without getting carried away with golden ratio because it's just beautiful. So from here, obviously, we know that y is equal to 1. The other solution is going to come from here. Let's go ahead and solve it by using the awesome quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula says negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus 4ac, which is 5, divided by 2. Awesome. This is why I call this golden ratio. All right? Great. Now, how do we proceed? Well, we got three values for y here. y equals 1, and y equals 1 plus root 5 over 2, and 1 minus root 5 over 2. And the second part, 
is going to be more interesting. All right, cool. What am I going to do next? Well, I should be proceeding with the solution. So if y, let's start with the easy one. If y equals one, now I got to go and back substitute. That means that two u is equal to one because y is equal to two, you remember that? So from here, I get u equals one half. Great, but u is not the original. u is equal to c squared, so c squared is equal to one half. Beautiful, that means that c can be root two over two or negative root two over two. But c is cosine x, therefore you have two values for cosine x, root two over two or negative root two over two. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if you're studying trigonometry, what would be your best friend? The unit circle. So if you draw a unit circle here, you'll notice that we get the root two over two at 45 degrees first, which can be written as pi over four in radians. You know that radians is an important uh, measure for angles. Uh, so you gotta know that you need to be familiar. Not as easy as degrees, but you'll get used to it. So pi over four is the smallest angle basically that satisfies this, okay? In other words. And then the next one is gonna be in the second quadrant, obviously, which is the negative cosine value. And then it's another negative here and then a positive here. So you know that cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrant, in the second and third, it's negative. Okay, cool. So we find we found four values and then it'll rotate, obviously. You can just keep adding two pi, but let's just find the solutions between zero and two pi. Half closed interval, how about that? Okay, because things are just gonna repeat. Well, I can just write it as then pi over four and then three pi over four and then five pi over four and then seven pi over four. But how am I gonna express those values? Like if I say multiples of pi over four, two times pi over four is not a solution, right? That's actually problematic. Then I need to say something like odd multiples of pi over four. So basically, to keep a long story short, I can safely say that the x values that I get from here are gonna be the odd multiples of, and if I start with n equals one, I can just write it as two n minus one multiplied by pi over four. So that's gonna be my first set of solutions. Make sense? These are all valid solutions. What about the second piece where we have the golden stuff? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take those values and proceed with them. But it just takes a little bit of algebra. So. What happens if y is equal to one of these values? Let's say one minus root five over two, or let's start with the plus version because I can go uh, work off of that. Okay, all right, awesome. Now, so one plus root five over two, and the other one is just gonna be one minus root five over, same thing is gonna apply. Cool, now y is equal to what? y is equal to two u, so from here we get the u value if you divide both sides by you uh, two, then you get one plus five divided by four. And you can all easily verify that this is going to be less than one, because remember it's supposed to be um, the cosine squared X because U is equal to cosine squared X, right? Okay, so this is cosine squared X and I need to be able to take square roots and it works because uh, five is less than nine, square root of five is less than three, one plus three is less than four. So this fraction is less than one, make sense? Okay, cool. So now I get two values from here. Cosine x can be the square root of one plus root five over two, or I get the negative of this because there are two numbers whose square equals that. Okay, cool. Now, from here, obviously, I can work off of the positive value and then take care of the negative inside that because I can just rotate my angle in such a way that I'll also include the negative values. Okay, so I'll hit all the quadrants. What about the other possibility where um, we have cosine squared x equals to uh, one minus root five over four? Okay, you'll probably notice that this is a negative quantity and cosine squared cannot equal a negative quantity. From here, we get two solutions. One is positive, the other one is negative because from Vieta's formulas, remember, the product is negative. Okay, cool. Then this is not gonna work, unfortunately. Obviously, you can look for complex solutions, but we're not getting into that right now. Okay, so from here, I'd like to take this one first and work off of that. All right, great, but we don't really know, is there an angle whose cosine is equal to that? Not that I know of, I thought about uh, 36 degrees, but I don't think that works. There might be an angle something like 18 degrees or you know, something like that. I'm not exactly sure and I haven't checked it out. If you do, please let me know in the comment section, but I'll just proceed with the value. It doesn't matter, you can just plug it in. So from here, I can safely say that x is equal to the inverse cosine function I need to use. So you can write cosine inverse 
or some people are gonna write this as arc cosine. It's the same thing, don't worry. But I'll just use cosine inverse and cosine inverse of one plus root five over two. So this is going to be one of the solutions. But notice that this is going to be in the first quadrant. Now, if you have an angle in the first quadrant whose cosine is given like this, so let's say your angle is here. Obviously, you can just go ahead and put that in the reflected over the x-axis and put it in the fourth quadrant, it's still gonna have the same cosine value. Or if you reflect it over the x, and you're gonna get a negative cosine value, which is good because we have both values, or you can just extend this or reflect this one, whatever. So there are basically four values for which this is true. If this is alpha, I have the pi minus alpha, I have the pi plus alpha, and I have the two pi minus alpha. So how can I put all that together to include all these angles? And there's actually a really cool way to do it. And here is how it goes. We can basically write this as plus minus the cosine inverse of this value because that's basically gonna take care of the angles, plus minus angles. And of course, you can definitely add multiples of pi to this so that you can also cover the other quadrants as well. Did I say also and as well in the same sentence? So it's kind of redundant, but you get the idea. Okay, cool. So what are the solutions? Let's wrap it up. And I probably need a nicer yellow, right? Okay, so this is gonna be one of my solutions and this is going to be the other solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.